The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Now in our house, when we moved a few years ago, maybe like five years ago or so, we put in a fairly large vegetable garden. So that first year, we had to clear all the grass and junk out of there, build up a fence so the deer wouldn't eat it, get it all prepped and planted. And now every year after that, you have to go out and till it and put fertilizer in and get all the weeds out and get it all set for planting. And then we start making little rows and putting the seeds in. Remember Veronica? She did a lot of the seeds this time. And the plants, you know, we have some plants we start at home and inside and we plant them and one's from the store and we're getting it all planted. And then the real work begins, right? Keeping it maintained, keeping the bugs off, getting rid of the weeds, watering, especially this year, watering and watering and watering over and over. So it's a lot of work, a lot of work. And so if you have a garden or have ever had one, you can probably appreciate how much you have to put into it. But then it all pays off in the end when you start getting cucumbers and peas and tomatoes and zucchini and watermelon, whatever else you might be growing, that abundant <laughs> harvest starts to come up. So then it is worth it. It's worth all that work. And yet we know that we're not totally in control either. Because some years I've been watering and taking care of it and we had like five cucumbers a couple years ago, like hardly any. They didn't come up and grow at all. And then other years we've had many of them, right? And so you can see that in, in farming and in, in gardening, sometimes it's a better growing year and it's beyond your control. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. And so Jesus now, he's not talking about my garden, about the harvest for this next uh, fall but instead the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, which is at hand. And the harvest is many, many, many souls, many souls that are hungering, that are looking for, searching for God, that are searching for meaning in their life. And you see, God is thirsting for them. God wants to gather men and women of every race, of every place, of every time to himself. He wants to gather them into his barn. And so Jesus is thirsting for these souls. And so in his day, he sent out his 12 disciples, the 12 apostles, to go out and proclaim the kingdom, to cure those who are sick, to drive out demons, to announce that the kingdom of God is at hand, to gather in his people to himself. And now this continues on to our day through, the, through apostolic succession. So this is the job of the bishops, with the priests and deacons to help them, but also of all the laity, of all the faithful, of all of you. By the nature of your baptism, you're called to participate in this as well, the call to participate in the harvest, the abundant harvest that is around us, to announce the kingdom of God. After all, this is what someone has probably done for you. The fact that you're sitting here in, at church in Mass there's probably been many people along the way that have given you a good word, that have prayed for you, that have shown you a good example. All the saints in heaven that have gone before us, that have been working with you, working for you, walking with you, maybe a little bit, maybe throughout your whole life, doing a little bit of weeding, a little bit of watering for you as you're growing in your faith, as you're growing on your spiritual journey. And so now you are called to do the same. You are called to do the same thing for those around you. To give them a good word, a word of encouragement. To pray for those who are sick, those who are suffering. Pray for their healing. Pray for the conversion of our family members. Stand up for the truth. Use words when we need to, but always by the example of our life. Showing that joy that is Christian joy in the resurrection of Jesus. So that's what each of you are called to do. That's how you can participate in the harvest. It might be a little thing, it might be a big thing. We don't know. We just do it and we let God do the rest of the work. You never know what little thing that you might say or do is gonna change someone's life. I can think of times in my life where someone said something or did something that seemed fairly insignificant, but I can tell how that has changed the trajectory of my path, my trajectory towards heaven. And so we never know what God is gonna do. We never know what things he can do with our work. The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. 
And brothers and sisters, God is asking you to go out into the harvest. He's asking you to be the laborers. And so here's one thing that we can all do together. And we can do it tonight. Every single person, no matter how big, how small, whatever ability you have, whatever talents, even if you feel like you don't understand the faith as much as you want to, it's, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Everyone can do this. And what I'm asking for you to do, what God's asking you to do, is just for a few moments now, if we open our minds and our hearts to him, open our minds and our hearts to what God is asking you to do right now, for a specific person in your life, a person that God is going to show you now, that he wants you to pray for them, maybe to help them in their time of need, financial or otherwise, to be a witness to them. This might be somebody in your own family, somebody at work, somebody at school. Maybe it's someone you don't even really get along with that well. Whoever it might be, God is going to ask you, going to put this on your heart for one particular person. And so what I ask you to do is open yourself up to that. And now through the rest of Mass, be praying for them. Be praying for that person. Commit yourself to do whatever God's asking you to do with them, for them, however big or however small. And as the gifts are brought forward from the congregation, offer that person up. Offer your prayer intention for them. Whatever their needs are, whatever sacrifices that you might have made or will make for them, offer those up now. And as I receive those gifts and bring them to the altar and offer my own intentions and I hand them over to Father Hedman, he's going to stand and he's going to offer those gifts that you bring up along with the bread and wine that are going to become Jesus' body and blood, soul and divinity on this altar. That perfect sacrifice. So uniting those people that God is calling you to minister to, to witness to, uniting them to God's sacrifice. What a rich, abundant harvest. There are probably about 150, give or take, people at Mass this evening if everyone does this, when everyone does this. That's 150 people who will receive God's love in a special way, who receive God's forgiveness, who might receive God's healing, who might receive God's call to a deeper conversion, to holiness. Whatever he might be doing, working through you to that person. That's 150 people that can be touched by you collectively. Now, if you did this just once a month or once a week, multiply that by, by 12 or by 52 and think of what a rich, abundant harvest this would be in this parish, in this community, if we reach out to those that God is asking us to reach out to in even the smallest way, a rich, abundant harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so God is asking you to be one of his laborers. God is asking you to go out and make Jesus known and loved. After all, this is the Great Commission. What Jesus said as he ascended into heaven is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this is what he's calling each of you to do. Today, tonight, for the rest of your life, is to be a laborer. He's sending each one of you. How will you respond? <laughs>